Let's see if we're rocking and rolling here. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because I am currently staying at my wife's family's house. And so there's a lot going on here. But I wasn't going to go another day without doing a stream. I didn't uh, get to do a stream yesterday. And uh, so I'm back in business. Real quick, we, we closed on a house. We just got a house. And uh, I, my allergies are pretty intense right now. I don't know if you can tell. But we had to get a house fairly quickly. Amy is out of the hospital. Here's a cool picture of her and Wally. Just uh, chilling out. She's out of the hospital. She's healthy. The baby's still in her belly. And uh, Walter's happy. He was so pumped to see her. It was pretty great. They're, they're playing intensely right now, right outside the door. So, uh, I mean, she's not exerting, exerting anything. So it's good, but I can't really, I can't, I can't really focus right now. But I'll try to get a, I'll try to bang out a, a stream because uh, a lot of people wrote to me that they were bummed I didn't do one yesterday, and I want to keep it going. But if I look distracted, it's because I uh, can hear everything going on, and uh, and it's it's pretty tough to stay focused on on anything. So we got a house. So the plan is I'm gonna fly back on Friday. Yeah, I can't I can't focus. I <laughs> it's like I'm like in the middle of a hurricane. So I'm gonna fly back on Friday. Get everything ready to uh, to drive back out here, but it'll take me a few weeks, so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be solo for a bit. An intense, intense week, very intense week. Good week, but definitely intense. I uh, Artling is a legend who got who got the new special done and edited already. The uh, Reluctant Warlord. That's coming out uh, tomorrow. God, that dude's awesome. All right. So let's just go through some stuff. Let's go through some memes that I thought were amazing. People send me memes all the time. And keep keep it up. Because uh, they make me laugh. Like th this, is, uh, this was cool. On the left it says black art. On the right it says white trash. It's uh, th the cool thing about art to me is when you can't really explain it, but you feel it. And you're like, all right, that's awesome. That makes sense to me. And it can probably mean something totally different to different people. I don't know what the artist's intention was, but to me, what that means is, uh, I don't know. I'll just let you come up with your own. This made me laugh. David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez getting ready to raid a firearms compound 2008 colorized. And it's just uh, the guys from... From uh, American Pickers. They really do. That looks like David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez. There, there was a... Uh, the uh, the uh, Miss America now does not rate women based on beauty. There's no more swimsuit. There's no more swimsuit category. My uh, glasses are crooked. So I predict... That within two years, David Hogg will be Miss America. Maybe five years. I think that Miss America will become another one of these political propaganda machines. And I think that it's going to be the next thing. I think uh, Miss America, within five years, there will be a man Miss America, a male Miss America. And there will be an obese Miss America. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to be so fast and people will act like there was never a time before that. Because I like to make predictions now because I don't think people believe what is coming. Because I've been accurate about a lot of stuff that's happened. And it's been somewhat infuriating seeing how people don't seem to respect people that were accurate. By the way, the reason that being accurate in predictions is really important is because that's how you can save uh, your own life and uh, uh, the life of your culture. 
because if you can see what's coming, you can prepare for it and you can uh, change accordingly so that you don't get uh, wiped out. And so, uh, you know, even people close to me in my life that, that in the past have told me that I was being uh, too intense or uh, paranoid. That's the beauty of text messages and emails and stuff like that is I can show the people and be like, look, remember when you called me intense for saying this? Not only did it happen, it's way worse than I even said. And they're like, yeah, but you're just not enjoying your, your life. It's like, dude, I'm telling you what's going to come next. And I granted I'm being a little uh, hyperbolic to be funny with David Hogg being Miss America, but that's next. What you do and the way you can tell is uh, the way you can tell what's coming in the future is you start doing pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is not as easy as it sounds. You know, pattern recognition can lead to a lot of uh, ignorance. You know, like you can say. A black guy stole my bike. That's a black guy. Therefore, he's going to steal my bike. No. That's why I do the racism song. Um, like black dudes with more than one pit bull scare the shit out of me, but a black guy with a cell phone on his belt I trust. Because it's about a combination of, of factors will lead to um, an event. It's not just one event. Like that's why... If someone doesn't see the uh, the pattern properly, they can become very, uh, it can be just as bad as not seeing any pattern because your predictions are off. Let me think of a good example. Uh, let's say you think that, let me think, what would be a good example of a prediction? Okay, like let's say you are in the 90s and you see Apple and a bunch of other internet companies explode and go real big. And then you say that, that okay, internet investing in internet companies will be successful. That's the pattern you see. That wouldn't work. You, you invest in like Sun and all this stuff and uh, Ask Jeeves, Alta Vista. You know, it just... And because the factor wasn't just that it was an internet company, or you could even bring it out farther. And that's when, uh, when, when bigotries that start existing and, and, um, I, I can't focus. This is like really hard. I, I, I will be doing these live streams while I'm still at this house, but I, I, every thought I have, I just hear like some crazy noise. <laughs> um, even more is saying that, okay, my friend invested in the Apple stock and he made a million dollars. Therefore, investing in stocks make you a millionaire. That's a bad pattern recognition. That's a bad pattern. Because it, it doesn't. It wasn't just stocks. It was stocks plus tech plus Steve Jobs Wozniak combo plus, you know, all that other stuff. And so if you see that in society, you got to watch for that. Like, what I found is the non not nonsense, but the, the parts of our society that aren't completely necessary, necessary. Like, um, if you're building a house, I'm not talking about the frame. I'm talking about like the size of the door or where the windows are placed or the fact that the doorknob is on the right side of the door. Stuff that in theory is arbitrary, but in reality is becomes somewhat of a institution, somewhat of a uh, thing that you can count on, that you can rely on. Those things are all being completely in, um, destroyed by leftism. Like, so, um, Miss America is a classic example of that. Like, Woman of the Year is a classic example of that. It's a little more uh, dangerous when it's, it's things that are... Serious. Like, for example, someone came to my show. This awesome dude came to my show who's a medical student. And he said that the soy, uh, he said that the soy is coming to medical school. And I'm like, no, because that's like live or die stuff. That isn't like underwater lesbian ballet. That isn't like one of these majors that you don't, that, that just everyone knows is nonsense. Like, like uh, English literature. It's just a nonsense major. Medicine can't have the soy. So he said that they're now protesting 
white coats, like white lab, like white doctor coats are being protested by these, uh, by these retards. And, uh, that's insane because you, the reason you wear white coats is because you can see anything on the coat. That's why it's not because of, uh, any racial thing. And so leftism is trying to dismantle, uh, the country and, Miss America will be a dude, and it will be someone like David Hawk. It'll be someone pushing an agenda, and it'll be ridiculous. Oh, and by the way, thanks to everyone who come out who came out to the last three shows from um, Prosser in Eastern Washington, and then of course Portland, which is was so cool. I got a clip to play you guys, and then um, Bellevue, Seattle was off the charts. It was so fun. And people gave me a bunch of stuff too. And uh, if I can't, if I don't do individual shout outs, I apologize. But like, uh, like someone gave me one of these. Uh, Nimmer what, looked at this and was like, no way. This was uh, like, like a military coin thing. And it wrote me a really cool letter. And I got children's books for Walter and Honey and Mead and all this cool stuff. Like this was a gift. This, um, this right here, that book. I don't know if that book specifically was, but all I'm saying is you guys kick ass. All right, while I blow my nose and read some of your super chats, I'm going to play you guys a clip from Portland. This is going to be from the new special, uh, Reluctant Warlord, shot by Artling. Here's one just for Portland. (laughs) No, 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 I really wrote this just for Portland. What am I doing here? (laughs) The city is insane. No room for my car. With 12 bike lanes. Grown men dress like they're homeless. That's dripping with soy And they're all sheep They're all weirdos What the hell am I doing here? trans queer (laughs) I'll knock you off your bike (laughs) and stomp on your soy tea oh you guys get the idea the rest of that you can watch on my YouTube channel it's uh, just called Portland Song (laughs) sorry my allergies are just nuts and uh I have not gotten a, any sleep in days. Last night I got a lot of sleep though, but before that, I'm I'm uh, just in recovery mode. It's been a wild run, and so um, that will be available for sale at hugepianist.com/specials later in the day. And I'm selling it for ten bucks, and I'm gonna s- sell it exclusively there for a month or two because I got to pay people this run. I got to uh, I got to uh, employ some people. And I've, I've had some expenses lately, so I want to uh, sell it. But it, but I'm going to tell you guys straight up, I'm going to put it on YouTube for free, eventually. The other specials I haven't, because I want to honor uh, the fact that people bought them. And I'm not just going to put them out for free. But uh, eventually I might, but because it's been a year on one of them. But uh, this one, I want people to see that, I want people to see that they don't have to be scared about Hollywood Exile. That you can literally make a show in a wood shop and much, much, much respect for creative woodwork in downtown Seattle, right in the heart of Seattle. My buddy's family owns uh, like like a like a city block of, of just and they just do woodworking and they own that truck they call Bruce and 
we just put that together. And my buddy, my buddy, uh, gave everybody free beer. He got like seven kegs of beer and just was like, this is for your fans. It wasn't even part of the thing. It wasn't like buy a ticket and get free beer. No one even knew that was coming. And it was just such an epic experience. So that was the night that Amy started bleeding too. So, uh, it was, it was awesome and terrifying and all at the same time. So thanks to everybody who was part of that. And that show will be uncut. Nothing is cut out of it. The entire set. And then I'll put up a uh, Nimmer set down the line as well, who absolutely destroyed. And, uh, that will be available either tonight or tomorrow. Cause I think I'm doing Crowder tomorrow. So I'll be able to give it a plug. All right. Let's talk more about some stuff. Oh, this was a, uh, a scene from from uh, Bellevue. This is my friend just took this on her on her phone, so it's not anything. It's just look at the energy, though. Yeah, so it's like beyond packed. This beautiful theater, grand piano, and someone, this is really funny. So someone was like, sing the song for Tommy Robinson. And I didn't remember the lyrics because I never thought I was going to uh, play that song live. Because frankly, it's a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little emotional and sad. And I like to stick to comedy. You know, I try not to go off, off, uh, off the reservation too far. And... But someone ran on stage with the printed lyrics to it, and this dude had a big beard. And uh, I was like, dude, don't run on stage with the amount of threats I get, especially if you have a big old beard. Because I was thinking like some jihad shit was going down. And um, it was pretty funny. But it was just a printed, a printed leaflet of my song because he was handing them out to people. And so I, I, that was the reaction to the song. So I'm going to put up the, the Tommy Robinson song soon. The audio came out great. That wasn't the audio. That's just from my friend's phone. I still have to uh, put the audio with the video. Another bear shot the, shot the video. Much respect to Marshall and, uh, and everyone who helped. That, that show had so many helpers just come down to just help. Everyone was like, Deleb sent me. And I'm like, this is so cool. And... Um, yeah, that's why I've been able to get better sound and better quality because people have just been helping. And also, uh, when people buy stuff, I get to pay people. So it's pretty sick. My, my, my glasses are all fucked up. All right. So that special will be available. Oh, let me read a couple super chats and then I'll, I'll get back into it. Congrats on the house and glad Amy is okay. It's from Michael. Thank you, buddy. This is from William. Congrats on the house. Day late bear in the house. Can I be verified? Welcome, day late bear. Uh, West Texas bear. It's my birthday, but more importantly, congrats on the house. Happy birthday. I wish I had a piano. I'd play a, your favorite song. That's coming soon, though. The house is sweet. It's a it's a bear compound. And uh, I'm, I I want to do a, a separate studio outside of the house. I might, I'm looking at prefab like uh, structures. To make like a, a an area away from the house. Because the house is big enough where I won't hear noise hopefully. But noise just like being in a, a house where I can hear everything and there's tons of people. It makes it so streaming's almost impossible. But uh, like it's just nonstop. It's just nonstop. But I'm, I'm very thankful that they're letting us stay here for now. So <clears throat> I'm not being a dick about it. But it's just there's no way I can I can process piano and jokes and and ideas and read what people are writing me while I'm just hearing like a door slam and someone go, my foot. Okay, Ms. Cunty Bear, congrats on the new home or the new house. Hope the move goes uh, as smooth as possible. Me too. I'm gonna be driving across the country by myself with four dogs. I'm thinking about doing some stops and doing some shows in like maybe the Dakotas or some of those Western states I don't always get to. I don't know what the right path is from New York to uh, Washington, but also I'm going to be real. There's some real sadness with it though, even my brother. He's uh 
he's he's taking it pretty hard and and that kind of, that's affecting me quite a bit but uh we'll we'll make it good analysis bear buy yourself a velvet painting of david hogg thank you good morning big bear great show in portland wife and i had a fantastic time big congratulations on the new house hope amy and the baby are doing well good luck and god bless all your future endeavors thank you very much that was um voracious salmon bear yeah the 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 Portland show is magic, and Amy and the baby are doing great. They got discharged. They're home because my wife's mother is a nurse, so that was a, a helpful little tidbit that we could uh, share with people. And uh, we're not letting her pick anything up or do anything. We're not letting her be stressed. She can't even. I I don't even want her to watch uh, that that shitty those shitty uh, TV shows that women all watch. You know, like any of those reality shows where someone's getting divorced or something and like everyone's crying, it's too much stress. That isn't how, no, that's not being watched. We're going to watch David Hogg become the most beautiful woman in the world. Tune in, drop out. How long before they allow men to compete in the Miss America competition? Uh, two, I'm going to say two years. It's going to be fast because these things move fast. You know, the safe bet would be like 10. But I think it's way faster than that. I think that like the, these trends move so fast. And the whole point is it's uh, they're cult purity tests. So they have to be ridiculously crazy. Like it has to be Bruce Jenner puts on a wig and gets hormone treatments. And you have to say he's the most beautiful woman in the world. Like that's so insane that um, that's why they do it. They do it so that people that agree have just said one of the craziest things imaginable. So that's how you know they're still in the cult. And it sheds the dead wood of people that think for themselves. Like free thinkers are just kicked out of the left and the mainstream as fast as humanly possible because they'll say, oh, why can't David Hogg be Miss America? And normal people will be like, because that's ridiculous. But there will still be that group of elite sheep Sheep wheat, who are like, no, how dare you? You're sexist. I am sexist. I'm not racist because races, the differences are so minute that it's not even a, a, a good factor in judging people. You know, like uh, your likelihood of getting sickle cell anemia or, you know, certain bell curve stuff for long distance running or, or spatial math shit on just an absurd level that it seems like only the Chinese really have on lock. Stuff like that. But that's a horrible, not horrible morally. I'm not saying it's horrible morally to judge people that way. It's just inaccurate. Because it's such a small, tiny little thing that like, whether or not someone's wearing, what, what kind of belt someone's wearing is way more of a, of like a read into their expected behavior <clears throat> and someone could say yeah but look at the murder and crime rates in cities to me the factor is democratic policies in inner cities and when you look at um where a lot of black populations <laughs> historically ended up <laughs> my nose is all crazy because i think the big difference in politics in this country is population density me and nimmer were talking about that on the drive from uh portland to seattle <laughs> I think that uh, if you live in a honeycomb, like in New York City, you're constantly thinking that you need management. You're like, somebody has to control all this because you don't have any property. You don't own anything and no ownership. Oh my God, this, this is my allergies are just out of control. It's just constant, constant nose problems. I'm going to blow my nose in a hospital sock. I'm never going to use that hospital door. So, you don't own anything. It's like the opposite of Jocko Willick. It's like no ownership. So, when you're in that mentality, you're looking for big government. You're looking for uh, somebody to take away the pain, you know? And when you're people like me, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, that, that even if you don't own your house, even if you rent your house, it's still a house because you still have a yard, you know, there's a good chance that there isn't uh, private security or police everywhere. And uh, there's animals and there's, it's just a different feeling. You feel like I'm responsible for this area. 
And that's a very right wing way of thinking. It's a very small government way of thinking. And that's the difference. If you live, if, if you live in Manhattan long enough, you will, it doesn't, you can be the most right wing guy on the planet. If you live in Manhattan long enough, you will have a feeling of like, I hope the government takes care of us. The strongest men will still think that way <clears throat> because you just see millions of apes, just apes. <clears throat> and that's not a racial thing. I mean, all human beings in that context, just like walking by each other and not ripping each other's faces off. And you're like, whoa. And then you share walls on all sides with someone else. Above you is a different family. Below you is a different family. You're literally in a honeycomb. So that creates a type of psychosis where you desperately want to submit your will and your um, autonomy to a, another power. And in the country, that higher power is typically God or, um, I don't know, so it, it's not the government. In, in, a, in a city, it's not God. You can't feel God. You can't see the stars. You'll never see the stars ever once. You're not connected to life or death. You never see the um, a dead body. You never hunt. You never kill what you eat. You never. You're not connected to the cycle of life whatsoever. So you never feel God. It's very easy to become nihilistic or agnostic or atheistic <clears throat> because there's no connection whatsoever to the real world. And then your natural desire to look up to uh, to submit to a higher power, which typically and healthily would be God or your ancestors, or whatever you believe, uh, becomes the state. And it becomes the government, it becomes, uh, uh, you know, please uh, hail Bernie, <laughs> you know? And, and that's the real um, separation. And I'm starting to come up with a new theory about the difference, the people that pursue truth versus people who pursue power. And truth and power are almost like God and Satan. And it's almost like they do literally exist. We just can't perceive them. Truth and power. Power, of course, being the evil pursuit. Truth being the good pursuit. And just like clams on a beach can't possibly perceive the ocean, I think that we can just get glimmers of power versus truth. And we make a, a choice in our lives whether or not we pursue power or we pursue truth. Because you see that a lot. And I think that just like when you have a false, when you recognize a false pattern, you say all white people are privileged. That's a false pattern. All black people will, will, will commit a crime. It's a false pattern. Because you just see a glimmer. You just, you just well, you, you see, what you see in your life, you start making these this pattern recognition, like imagine being a Southerner right after, uh, right after the Civil War and Reconstruction. I understand why they hate Yankees. I do, because every New Yorker you meet is some carpetbagger trying to uh, trick you and steal from you. Because you you don't go to New York, you don't go to where I live in the Adirondack Mountains and see that that the people are uh, like mind-blowingly similar to uh, to what you're accustomed to. So if everybody you meet, like if you meet three total New Yorkers in your life and you're from like uh, the backwoods of Alabama and it's 1870, you're going to start assuming that all New Yorkers are absolute shyster uh, thieves that just come to trick and to manipulate and to rob from you and to whatever. Because that's bad pattern recognition. You, all, you see New York, you don't see New York who comes south after uh, Civil War. You know, that's a different pattern. And it's like that with perceiving different people's intentions. You know, you, you like what just happened with uh, Samantha B calling um, the daughter of our president a feckless cunt and then implying that she should use her sexuality to manipulate her own father for policy. That's a horrifying thing to say to somebody. And a lot of people, I'm not even going to split it into left and right. It's going to be power versus truth because there's, there's people on the right that also have issues with power and truth. So I'm not going to make that distinction, but the left seems to be much significantly worse in this aspect because of that management problem. So you see a glimmer where you're like, you hypocrites, like you don't care. Like Roseanne just did an accurate comparison to a fictional character of a woman who's praised Cuba 
and you called for her execution. And now Samantha B does this and you don't care at all because one is pursuing what is true. Like people that get confused by this. And trust me, I'm one of them. Because you assume in others what you are looking for, where you're like, well, that isn't true. Like you don't have logical consistency. Some people, that's not what they're going for. They're going for power. So if they see an Achilles heel in a population and in white people in America, a lot of white people, not all, they're easily guilted and they want to help. White people are very helpful culturally. Like they'll fix your tire. They'll just help. They're helpful people. They're just, and they want to make amends. It's, it's, it's a cultural thing with white people in America. I'm, I can't speak for uh, Europe, but if, if they perceive that somebody has been wronged, it's very, very in our culture to uh, make the situation right. And I think that comes from uh, thousands of years of horrifyingly cold winters where you really don't want enemies. And so that's perceived as a weakness by someone pursuing power. So what, what do they do? They say white privilege. You know, they say uh, patriarchy, supremacy, all this stuff. And so then white people will then just be like, okay, whatever you say, just take it. And then we're good now, right? And the more we, we are seeing that we're not good, that there will never be an end to that. It will never be satisfied. The thirst will never be satiated. So what's the point? And that's why we see a real backlash now where it's like, we don't want to hear any of that shit. We don't want to hear a fucking word of, of systemic patriarchy, like any of that stuff. Because we know it's a trick. We know it's a trick used to trick us based on something that we consider to be virtuous. And by white, I mean culturally, obviously. There's black people that are part of this culture. Many, many, many black people that are also part of this culture. But it's uh, it's like you can say, you know, the blues is it came from uh, black culture and that wouldn't, you know, that's that's completely acceptable. And what I'm saying is the same thing. It's a Northern European trait, very Germanic, like as, as intense as the Germans can be, if, if a German offers you, like historically, and this goes all the way back to the barbarians, and bar, barbarian comes from the word um, barber, and it, it, it originally came from the fact that no one could understand what they were saying. Ba, 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 ba. That's where barbarian comes from. It, it came from the Romans thinking that they were speaking gibberish. So they would say, bar, 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 bar. So they'd say barbers. Barbers was like, ba, ba. It'd be like saying, nang, 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 nang. Like, like if you heard a Japanese person talk, you would just be like, nang, 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 bing, bong, bing, bong. So if you call them bing, barians, because you're like, bing, bong. So when people get upset about American Indian, I don't really give a flying fuck because barbarian came from literally, ba, 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 ba. It became, it, it came from the fact they spoke gibberish. Eskimo simply means someone who makes um, snowshoes. That's all it means. The barbers, the barbarians, that came from Bob, 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 Bob. It literally was like, they're so retarded, we can't hear what they're saying. So that's what we're going to call them forever. But one of the traits of the barbarians, <clears throat> of the Germans, the Visigoths, the Ostagoths, the, the, the Huns, the Vandals, is if you asked for something, you were given it. And you always broke bread and you, sh and you shared meals. And you, you drank alcohol until it was better or you, you fought each other. Like if you had an enemy, what they would do is they would sit around. This is like the 5th century shit. And this lasted all the way until now, if you look at biker gangs. And they had huge mustaches. It's hilarious. Anyway, if you had an enemy, you would sit with the enemy and drink alcohol until you either made up or you fought each other to the death. That's pretty hilarious. All right, I'm going to read some more Super Chats. I'm getting sidetracked. Hey, Big Bear, just made a channel with your clips like I said I would. It's small right now, but I will keep adding more clips. Please give it a shout out. Channel name Unbearable Clips from Destroyer Bear. Check out Unbearable Clips, everybody, and Owen Benjamin Clips, for that matter. We got some good people doing some good stuff, and that's, and that's the culture war, guys. And that's it. Just do something. Just get up and do something. And I'm willing to put my life and um, career and income and physical safety and sanity on the line. So 
the good news is it has inspired people to do more stuff because we're not going to beat Hollywood. We're not going to beat academia. They already have a stronghold on all what they have. We have to come up with something that competes and wins because the culture war is, is, is so important. And we can have a bloodless war here and not just start murdering each other because it's getting to the point where people can't, they can't tolerate each other. Like the left and the right's divide is, is I don't think it's ever been this distinct since the Civil War, where people just can't even, as soon as someone starts saying like, oh, like, all right, look at this, Bernie Sanders, let's take a look real quick. $30,000, the cost to send a California student to UCLA. $75,000 to send someone to prison in California. Maybe, just maybe. We shouldn't be investing in education rather than locking kids up. Everything is wrong with this. There's no middle ground for this, for me. There's no moderate. I'm not a moderate. Because I'll never say like, oh, I could see both sides. No, every... Okay, this is worded so that he's almost saying if you commit rape, like if you're going to prison, like you just raped someone, instead you should go to college. So the best way to get to college is just to commit a, a violent crime, ensuring yourself um, a prison sentence. That's, I, I don't think that was even intentional for him to sound like that because even, even Bernie Sanders, even that crazy, psychotic old bitch wouldn't sound that crazy, but the causes of all of this, $75,000 to send someone to prison, right, because of a lot of uh, California policies. It's a, it's a, once the government starts subsidizing things, the, the costs explode. The, uh, the cost of education is exploded because of the government subsidies. If the government is willing to pay for someone to go to college, the college will then just start increasing the price of college. It's went up like a thousand percent in 10 years and there's no return. Do not go to college. It'd only go to college if you're, uh, well, according to my new buddy, even medicine's been compromised, but engineering, nursing, uh, trades, all the trades are still fine. Medicine. Don't, don't go for law. Even like there's more, there was more people in law school than there were lawyers like eight years ago or 10 years ago. And no one really saw that as a problem. Uh, Big Bear did obviously. And now we see the result. We see all these unemployed lawyers and those are some horrifying human beings. So this to me is, in, there's no middle ground in what he says right here. Don't go to college. Don't 30,000. So who did, so by the way, when he says, uh, maybe just maybe we should be investing in education rather than locking kids up, he means tax money. He doesn't, he doesn't have any money. Bernard Sanders has never had a job. He has three houses because of taxpayers money and he gets that money at the end of a gun. All taxes come from the threat of putting someone in a prison, in a prison. So Theoretically, if I was unwilling to pay my taxes so that people could have the $30,000 to send their ungrateful, shitty little kid so that they can extend their childhood to 22 instead of 18, which is already way too old to be a child, what Bernie would do is he would lock me up in a prison for $75,000. You understand how hypocritical and ridiculously stupid that is? He's complaining about greed, prisons, and uh, and guns. That's what he says. He says that we shouldn't have guns, that we're too greedy, and the prison system's bad. But he wants 90% of your income, and if you don't pay him, he will put you in prison because he will send men with guns to get you. That is power, not truth. That's a pursuit of power. That doesn't make any logical sense. There's nothing true about these statements. They're manipulative means to an end. That's how a man, a dirty, filthy, little old man can get so much power because he knows how to manipulate people. There is no truth whatsoever to what he says. None. He is not ever thinking like, like, uh, 
Nimmer does a joke about how how funny it is that Bernie Sanders is the only Jew who's bad at math. He's not bad at math. He's not bad at math. He doesn't care about the right answer. He says two plus two is five if it gets him one more inch of power or one more nickel. And that's the truth. And to me, that's my enemy. That's the absolute enemy is, is those who pursue power over truth because it will be the absolute end of safety. It won't be the end of society. There will always be a society. This isn't the first time this has happened. And in all societies, people will on some level pursue power over truth from time to time and individual to individual. Even within an individual's life, there'll be times when you pursue power over truth or truth over power. But the accepted universality of power over truth, which is what the socialists pro propose, it's the end of safety, it's the end of prosperity, it's the end of um, individual rights. It's the end. It's the end of all of that. And it's coming if you don't fight it. And you fight it with the culture war. You fight it by showing that you can do... I, I mean, in this special that I'm selling, for the because the free market is needed... Um, Oh, I, also in the clips from Bellevue, I literally call, like, I do, I describe why I call Justin Trudeau a faggot. Because <laughs> you understand, censorship is only a, a way to never address any real issues. That's all it is. Like, barber, like a barbarian is way more offensive than saying Jap or gook or kike or any of that stuff. Barbarian comes from Baba. Bar, 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 because no one understood what they were saying. I just talked about that. But Jap simply is short for Japanese. And it's way more offensive that we incinerated hundreds of thousands of them with an atomic weapon than saying the word Jap. So when I was in Prosser talking to the crowd, because they're known for developing the atomic bomb. And by the way, I'm not knocking that. If it was the right war strategy, it's the right war strategy. I'm not making any moral claims on that. But just know that saying Jap instead of Japanese is not as offensive as liquefying their grandparents with a bomb. And if you don't see that, you're too far down the lazy river of power and not truth. Because that's an obvious truth. It's, it's as obvious as the nose on my face. And that's not a knock at myself for being a quarter Jewish. Look at this one. Roseanne spin off inches closer to reality at ABC. So these greedy fucks are going to try and use Roseanne's legacy to get those ratings. Because they want those ratings. They're hungry for those ratings. But they can't tolerate Roseanne because Roseanne is openly a Trump supporter. Not even a conservative. Not right wing. She's, she's kind of a commie in a lot of ways. Her politics. I think she's funny. But she's, you know... She's not like like a conservative or even a libertarian in a lot of ways. But just because she is uh, supportive of Trump, they had to get an offer. And so they're going to have a Roseanne without Roseanne. They're just going to have all the uh, all the other characters. It'll bomb horrifically, and it should. But that's just pure, just pure greed. All right, let me read some super chats. Ah. Uh. I'm not an advocate of conspiracy theories, but have you seen any of this Tucson Semex stuff cropping up? This is truly scary shit I can't shake off. I have no idea what that means. I'll check it out after. I believe in conspiracies. Dude, guys, American independence was a conspiracy. It was a small group of men conspired against the, the British government to overthrow it. Conspiracy theories are, are just real, constantly. There's constantly true conspiracy theories. Bill Clinton is for sure a, I'm a legend. I don't want to get sued. But he's a pedophile. Like, he is. He, he went to Lolita Island with Epstein like 30 times. Um, these people have sex with children. And, and people would call that conspiracy theory. That's straight up true. That happens all the time with powerful elite uh, leftists, constantly, because they want to destroy that which is has hope, that which has beauty, that that which is to be protected, because it becomes um, compulsive. And 
that's that's the end result of people that pursue power over truth is rape of children. It happens all the time. Soviet Union had some of the worst child rape rings in history. Catholic Church, I, I believe that was one of the problems with that is because they weren't pursuing the word of God. They would pursue the institution of the Catholic Church, their interest over God. That to me is taking the Lord's name in vain. It's not saying Jesus Christ when you stub your toe. It's saying God is telling me that you have to give me more money for more shiny shit. And so the end result of power over truth, you can't win at this stuff. Like there is power and there is truth. And those forces start feeling a lot like God and Satan, right? And you can get a glimpse of it every now and then, but just like a clam that can't perceive the ocean, you can barely see it, but it's there. Because we're not designed to see reality. There is reality. There is objective truth. I'm not a postmodernist, but we're not designed to see the whole thing. We're blind men touching the elephant. And I, I can now see in people so clearly the pursuit of truth versus the pursuit of power. And power to me feels a lot like Satan, and truth to me feels a lot like God. And the end result of the pursuit of power is not the ability to switch over to truth. Like once you get your big mansion and your power and your military and all that, you can then become truth. You're done. Like you're, you're now an agent of the wicked. You're now Bill Clinton on a private plane going to an island to have sex with children that were runaways, that were taken from their parents. That's real. And the amount of people that do that, and the reason that that happens, because I think about this stuff, like why? Like what is drawing pedophiles to places of power? Like in England, it's horrible. And in, in, uh, just, just power, like what is it? And that's what it is. It's you're now an agent of the devil. If you pursue power over truth. And, and so the result of that is the devil will make you do that which is the worst. Which is the rape of a child is worse than anything I can possibly imagine. And why would anyone do that is what racks my brain. Why? Why would anyone try to normalize that? Why is Vice Magazine trying to make it seem okay? It's because it's, it's just pure evil. It's the... It's the it's the uh, tailpipe of a power pursuit. It's the regurgitation. It's the, it's the what remains from someone who burns power and not truth is that. And we see it over and over and over again. Power, one of the biggest ways to accumulate power is secrets, is, uh, is manipulation. And it's so obvious who's doing it. And you'll just get a glimpse every now and then of what someone's really capable of. Like when you say something, like when I, when I've said that I'm, I'm against abortion in front of some of these people, you can almost see fangs just. <sighs> All right. Big bear. Can I be known as Kennewick bear? Of course. Welcome Kennewick bear question. Do you consider yourself a leader? I ask because of how I observe people listening to you at Burns Tavern in Prosser. Thanks. Do I consider myself a leader? I'm a reluctant warlord, <laughs> which is the title of the new, uh, the new special. Oh, and I had a blast with you guys too. I'm really glad we all hung out. I got in real late, but it was, uh, it was worth it. All right, I'm just going to read these and then I'm going to go. I got to do a, uh, an inspection on the house today. Here's a G and a G. Use them responsibly. Ah, oh, bears well though. That was brilliant, but I don't need any G's today. Forgot to ask, have you verified as Bears Waldo Bear? Here's another G. Yes, welcome, Bears Waldo Bear. Just some send some to your P.O. box yesterday. Think you'll get it? Magster Bear. Yeah, I'll be there the rest of the month. I got I want to spend some time with my brother. I have to do a lot of planning and prepping. And um, so I'll be I'll be there. Oh, and I'm also I got a hookup, I think, with uh with gun uh a gun distributor. Because Washington has awesome gun laws, by the way. Awesome. So things are about to really escalate in the weaponry department because New York is just a, a awful, awful place for guns. Come through Minnesota again. 
for driving to Washington. I should. I should do a couple shows. Seeing your buddy Ruben tomorrow in D.C. Are you coming to Baltimore area anytime soon? I was looking uh, to do that. Nimmer had some place in Baltimore. Classic black dude. So I'd love to. But if you if you talk to Ruben, tell him I said hi. Field of Bears, any thoughts on the misanthrope idea I texted you? I haven't read it. I'm sorry, Field of Bears. I'll read it. Sorry. I've, I've, I've had like, I haven't had an ounce of time or energy to myself in, in like a week. And I'm like, I'm, I've been verging on just real sickness lately. <coughs> Hang on. Oh man. I just blew my nose on a sock pretty bad. I'm not going to use that sock, don't worry. Oh, I just popped my ears. There we go. I'm waiting on the stream. House? What house? You found a house already. Awesome. Can your brother road trip with you across the country while you film it and do shows? Learner Bear. Oh, hey, Learner Bear. I hung with Learner Bear in uh, Omaha. He's awesome. He's an awesome dude. Maybe. My brother has a lot of work, tree work and stuff, but there's a lot of trees on the property that I need to get down, so I'm going to fly him out, hopefully. To just go crazy with it. But um, that would be an awesome documentary. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose that to him. But yeah, I found a house closed on it. Because I, I, there, there's a real, there was a real time factor going on here. Because Amy's not coming back with me. And she's going to have, uh, have the baby out here, which is good. I registered my name. Because I'd be verif verified as Yo Soy Bear. Rad show in Portland. Great to meet you. Keep fighting the good fight. Welcome, Yo Soy Bear. No deck bear here. Take I-94 and come to Fargo or Bismarck. Congrats on the house. Praying for you and Amy. Please plug my podcast, The Plane Podcast, on, uh, on SoundCloud iTunes at The Plane Podcast. That's P-L-A-I-N. Like the opposite of um, complicated, not the aviation. There should be a marathon for the absolute best runners. It should be called the Master Race. Hilarious. Back when comedy, mainstream comedy was still okay to be hilarious, uh, Zach Galifianakis used to do a joke called, he was like, I turned on the TV to watch The Great Race. Is that what it was called? The Great Race or something? He was like, I thought it was just going to be about white people. What was that show called? The Something Race? Check the chat. Are you guys, say, do you guys know what it is? Is it the Master Race? Amazing Race. He's like, it's called Amazing Race. I thought it was just gonna be about white people. Dude, Zach Galifianakis used to do a joke with the word sand nigger in it. Comedy has just. That's why I know it's gonna happen. To uh, David Hogg will be the next Miss America. Good morning, Big Bear. Glad to hear everything's going well with the family. Best of luck with the move. I love the differentiation between truth and power. I do not think people normally look at those two as a dichotomy. It is a dichotomy. You can get power through truth, and you can get truth through power, but it's accidental, and it's not really... Like, you could become powerful. Like, Jordan Peterson, I think, has gotten power from truth. I don't... It's not like they can't work together. But it isn't, how do I explain this? You'll get prosperity from truth. You'll get, um, I don't know. There's no guarantees in any of this. I'm still trying to figure it all out. But I do know that truth and power are not separate necessarily. Like, for example, I pursue truth and I have a sense of power in certain ways. Like, I can influence people. I can... I was about to say send out a tweet, but I can't anymore. I can uh, put up an Instagram <laughs> or do a live stream. And uh, and I only do you, did YouTube today because I'm a little pissed at Vimeo. Vimeo just took down three of my videos because of uh, hate speech. So uh, I don't know. That could have been a fluke, but whatever. Fuck them for now. I'll probably still do both once I get settled. But uh, that's just infuriating. Hate speech. It's the biggest joke to anyone that still has a soul hate speech. Ugh, what a bunch of fucking losers. All right, Dalek Bear. Thank you, buddy. 
Jonathan, been here since the beginning, Big Bear, but finally I can afford to support you a little. Thanks for joining the fight. It's been a long war. Can I verify his Axe Bear? Welcome, Axe Bear. Thanks for a axing. Will, thanks, Will Dale. Can I, can a new plug UNN on Louder with Crowder tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I might be just doing a song, but I'll tell, yeah, I should tell Crowder that. I, I It's not 100%. They just texted me that yesterday, if I could potentially do a song about a, a, a very funny topic. Maybe we'll periscope it out together and work on it. Uh, yeah, but check out Unbearable News Network, everybody.com. UnbearableNewsNetwork.com. We shot a bunch of... Uh, we shot a bunch of promos in, in Portland. Let me just show you one picture that makes me laugh. Where is it? Dude, Artwing, I'm telling you, is the man. All right, so here, here was one of my, uh, hang on, let's see if this works. You see that? Jews, the Jews control the weather. Fact. Well, we were shoot, we were just we were shooting in this pretend uh, newsroom, and I was writing down like what the news of the day was, and I'm just obsessed with people who think the Jews control the weather. It makes me laugh nonstop. Bernie is afraid of prison. His wife is equals more afraid. Seriously, by the time a predator is finally incarcerated, definitely a few dozen felonies accumulated on their sheet. Good luck with the new bear den. Thank you. Justin isn't gay, but he loves to chug hot semen. Are you are you talking about Trudeau? Quebec bear. I just think he's. Uh, I agree. I don't even. I don't think he's gay. I think he's so psychopathic that he would just chug anything that would get him one more second on television. Which is even. Which is the worst type of anything. If someone's just gay, like they're just nat they're just gay. Like Ruben, fine. God bless. But if you're if you chug anything handed to you just to get another ounce of power, it's the worst kind of gay. Bag nasty. Leaving for Navy Air Crew School soon. Can I be reverified as Flight Suit Bear, formerly Nasty Bear? Welcome, Flight Suit Bear, and God bless and uh, crush. Right now, Nimmer's like oh, it's not the it's not the Marines. Just kidding. Andrew, that was very generous, my friend. I feel this pendulum swinging deeper. The weird thing about Western culture is we take it on the chin until one day defense technology gets unnaturally effective as fuck, i.e. black powder crossing the Euphrates. Less than 500 years later, we got nukes. Wow. Yeah, true. That's the thing about Western culture is you take it on the... You, you, Western Westerners are nice until they're not, and then they're really, really not nice. It's like that with the Germanic tribes. It's like they're all about like sharing drinks and uh, having big feasts until they're not, and then they took Rome. <laughs> Can I be verified as broadsword bear? Longtime listener from South Carolina. One year left of law school. And I'm getting married in 10 days. Love y'all. Congratulations, bro. And welcome, Broadsword Bear. I used to want to be a lawyer. I, uh, you could, there's still ways to be a good lawyer. It's a good gig if you have a good, uh, good eye for it. But, uh, because I love words and rhetoric and persuasion and all that stuff. But it's just gotten so weird lately. Watching Jordan Peterson's Pinocchio analysis with family all week. Oh, that's a great one. Danny Bear's daughter said, Pleasure Island would be a candy store for B.J. Clinton. So true. And that, dude, I mean, that's a great sh showing of truth versus power. Pleasure Island, it turns you into a donkey. And then when you're a donkey, you're a, a beast of burden for your master. And your master is the devil. So, and dude, this, I really believe this shit. There is a force that's sat satanic. And it's like, once you're a donkey for the devil, you do monstrous things, and you don't even know why you're doing it at the time. It's so weird. Check PayPal. I will. Come to Fargo, please. That'd be nice. Swing through Minnesota again. Oh, I said that. I read that one. Fargo, North Dakota, when you pass through on I-94, definitely be event. Oh, let's plan that. Let's All right. Fargo, North Dakota, I will be doing a show. We got to figure it out, though. I'm a woman. Lerner Bear is a woman in Washington. In California, met you in Brea and took a selfie with Amy in Portland fishing. Oh, I thought it was Lerner Bear was uh was it, oh Learning Bear. 
In Omaha, there's Learning Bear. I gotta get my bear my bear names better. I, I thought I was pretty good with the bear names. That's a tricky one though. Learner Bear versus Learning Bear. Sorry about that, Learner Bear. Creasy Bear. I hope you do a special after Amy has the baby and you title it Postpardon Me. Ha! <laughs> what differences between moms and dads parenting? That's hilarious. <coughs> Bellevue and Prosser were a blast. Met you after both shows. Med school guy. Can you read my A-Bell? Subject line is welcome to Washington State Big Bear. Of course. And uh, I, I, dude, I, I've talked about you twice on this stream without even knowing you were here. Just sent the message, but do not mind paying twice. Can I be Sparty Bear? Also, I need to get a refund on my t-shirt. It shrunk three sizes. Yeah, of course you could get a refund on your t-shirt, but I, I think that uh, your woman shrunk it. Yeah, welcome Sparty Bear. But, you know, I think the refund should be... Uh, a stern talking to to whoever's doing your laundry, which uh, should be a woman. Learner Bear sent last chat. Learning Bear was the bear from Nebraska. That's exactly, that's right. Learning Bear. Thank you, Learning Bear. It's an honest mistake. Learner Bear versus Learning Bear. Just sent you the Bellevue clips. Love the show. Thanks, Marshall. Yeah, much love to Marshall who recorded that show. All right, let me check the, uh, the PayPal's. And then, uh, then I will be out. This has been a fun one. This has been a really fun, fun stream. I, at first, I was a little pessimistic. Because there was so much going on around me. And now everybody seems to have quieted down. Looks like everyone's taking the nap that they, uh, they should be taking. Kyle. Hi, Owen. I'm driving through Northwest today. And I'm hoping to grab beers with people along the way. Could you send a shout out for a beer, bear gathering for me? Hashtag Bears Unite. Yes. How are they supposed to get in touch with you? All right. Well, Kyle Cavanaugh is on Twitter. I remember back in the day. Hit him up if you guys want to grab beers. He's a great dude. Does great live streams. Has a, um, He always tells everyone to breed, have babies, make babies. Don't pull that penis out like a coward. Make uh, make babies and then love the mother with all your, all your heart. So hit up Kyle Cavanaugh. He's in the Northwest. I would have beers with you. I mean, maybe I can later today if you're around uh, the Washington State area. Location unknown. But let's just say it's not Seattle because I still have my penis and my balls attached to my body. Brandon. Tommy Robinson's last interview before being arrested recently. Audio gets pretty rough at points because there's apparently raping the mic in the background. Ha <laughs> ha. But it's a good watch. At one point, she asks where he thinks he'll be in 10 years. And he says he doesn't think he'll be here. That he doesn't want to leave his wife and kids behind. But it's not about his kids. It's about everyone's kids and their kids. Watching it now, knowing that he was two days away from being sent off to potential death sentence, makes it sad, but also inspiring. Dude, we, we got to watch this. Tommy Robinson. I can't get this clip, though, I don't think. Ah, I don't even know how I could get this. And maybe you can show the copy. This is going to be uh, tricky, but what you just described, I, I really want to see that stuff. I, I really, here we go. Let me uh, download this. Is that dude, I'm going to put up, uh, I'm going to put up download link file. <laughs> the live song I did for Tommy in Bellevue because it was so heavily requested because you guys are such champions. I right, this will take one minute to download. In the meantime, I will read the next one. Kevin. Oh, and this is for you to check out later. I think you will like it since it puts some science behind your bit about all pop music being the same. The truth why modern music is awful. Was that a mountain you clip? Because if so, I, I think I've seen it, but I would love to watch that. That's from I'm a Bear. Yeah, no, it's it's all bad. Modern music sucks. South Park explains pedos check out Super Adventure Club. Just like they did the, the Scientology episode. Yeah, the South Park is the goat, man. Like I watched uh I rewatched with apologies to Jesse Jackson. The the nigger guy episode. Dude, 
They said nigger in that episode about 150 times, and it was hilarious. I watched it with Nimmer, and we analyzed it, like why they got away with it and why I faced so much more backlash. I think part of it is just that they're a cartoon, and I'm a real boy. But I guess cartoons can just get away with anything. It's pretty great, though. Hey, there's that nigga guy. Hey, nigga guy. Hey. It, it, South Park does the perfect irony. Like when they had, uh, when all the other nigga guys find Randy, and it's like uh, uh, Mark Furman and uh, Kramer and all those guys, and they're like, and Randy's like, but you said it right to a black person's face. I did it by accident. And he's like, sure, sure, that's what you tell yourself. That, yeah, yours wasn't as bad as mine. That you're a different type of nigga guy. That maybe they even laugh about the way you said it. But don't you ever lie to yourself, nigga guy. They look at you just the way they look at me. as just another damn nigga guy. Because the whole uh, episode is based on Randy is on Wheel of Fortune. And it says, people who annoy you. And it has all the letters. It has N space G-G-E-R-S. And he's like, I don't think I should say it. And they're like, say it, Randy. And everybody's watching. And he just goes, niggers. And it was naggers. And so then he has to apologize to Jesse Jackson. And Jesse Jackson's like, Kith it. Yeah, apologize. And he has to kiss his ass, like his bare ass. And everybody starts knowing him as the nigger guy and not Randy. Like, it's like, he's at a comedy club and someone's like, hey, ain't that the nigger guy? He's like, he's like, we just playing nigger guy. And he's like, yeah, just playing. And then he has, he goes to like a, uh, <laughs> a slam poetry event. And he's like, because... The ink in my name. Like, he's doing the whole poetry thing. And he's like, but they look at me and think, that's just another nigga guy. Stop. Pretend. It's just, it's brilliant. That the, the guy who says nigger becomes the outcast of society, just like, historically, the way black people were depicted. Where When you have, like, Skeeter and the boys come around, and you're like, hey, Skeeter's like, Get him, Skeeter. And he's like, we don't take kindly to nobody that is intolerant around here. It's like, we're going to get you, boy. We're going to get you, nigga guy. It's like, you don't you don't call African Americans that name. Get him, Skeeter. Family joke idea from Regan Smith. Dad jokes through the ages. What was considered a dad joke in Bible times? That's funny, dude. What was during the Revolutionary War? Was Patton a wicked, brilliant general at work and a notoriously bad pun maker at home? Dad jokes have made families struggle, and I'm going to screenshot this. This is really funny. Thanks, Rags Bear. You're just another nigga guy. Hospital beds ain't free, rest mama bear. Oh, Jeanette, you're the best. That was very, very uh, thoughtful. Kenneth. Okay, so they'll have you on the podcast if you're interested. Who are we talking about? Uh, since they're in Thailand, I remember you saying on one of your streams, something like, don't ask if I need help. Just tell me what you can do. So I did. The only bad part is it'll have to be two weeks from now. Mike is back from the States playing poker at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house and visiting family. If you want to do it and push out your new special, I will. I'll give you their contact info. Oil feel bear. All right, I'll hit you up. I don't know what you're talking about, but that sounds very intriguing. Just another nigga guy. All right, this Tommy thing I think is almost done. All right, let me check the super chats. It's from Ken. Congrats on the house. I'm glad Amy and the baby are doing well. All three of my kids were a month early and have been healthy their whole lives. Here's some help with the hospital bills or ammo cash, perhaps. Oh, dude, you're the best. I think our insurance might cover most of the hospital, which is a huge relief. I was literally spiraling. I just wasn't showing it because I was, uh, was you know, being a strong bear. But that, like, every day we were there, I was like, oh, God. It's all it's always worth it, obviously. But at the same time, I was like, like th those days are, like, sometimes, like, four grand a day. And we're out of state. 
and our health insurance blows. But I think that we managed to get a good chunk of it paid, which is huge. Huge. South Park is the best. Stevie Nicks is a goat. Bob, baby, Bob, Bob. Yeah, that was a funny one. Bunny Bear. Owen, I'm literally packing up to drive from uh, Kentucky to Massachusetts to hang with my twin for our birthday on Friday. I missed the update on Amy. I've been praying and worried about you guys. Much love. Oh, she's good. Thank you. The Tommy clip starts at the 24-minute mark. Okay. Let's see where we're at. We're at 137 uh, MBs out of 151. 40 seconds remaining. And that'll be a good way to end this, baby. You're just another nigga guy. Sure. They might laugh at your nigga guy. My little sister, who is 14, has fallen into the trap of the entitlement culture. She seems to believe she can do no wrong, and anything bad that happens to her is other people's fault. In addition to thinking life is harder for her than anyone else, it's driving the rest of my family insane, and we have no idea what to do. One night, she was spotted spouting nonsense, and I took what she said and applied it to scenarios and it was the funniest thing ever to see her reactions but I don't have the energy to keep doing that. Any advice from either you or the Bears? On a bit of a lighter note, can you analyze a stand-up a uh, uh, bit for me? I'm 17 so I still think poop is funny. Uh, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this and I'll do it tomorrow's stream. I, I love analyzing that stuff, dude. Are you kidding me? I mean, hopefully you're kidding me because you're a comedian. I will, uh, I got, oh, it's in crackers. Sweet. <laughs> I'll do that tomorrow. Any advice about her? I don't know. Sometimes chicks go through those phases anyway. It's not always just cultural. Sometimes women just get real entitled, but, um, uh, she'll, she'll get better or she won't just keep focusing on you being funny and just, uh, and call her out for this. All right. 10 years in the future question is a 24. Okay. Here we go. It's done. Let me, uh, let me get this going. In 24 minutes. You're just another nigga guy. God, my allergies are just so shitty. There we go. Here, here's, here's Tomei. I'm, I'm all for exactly what you said, that the children should be taught, but teach them the truth. My video is aimed at eight-year-olds, so one year younger for yeah. the mosque visit. So the year before, they learn about... And then they can go and ask questions. Exactly. So I love that. Now, I see you've gone further and further. The men who started at 25 didn't know this about Mohammed, didn't have that reading, didn't have that knowledge, didn't have the skill to write that book. Now you've gone all this distance. Mm. Ten years in the future, can you imagine where you might, where just, or the, where are the green growing edges of your life? I don't think I'll be here. <laughs> in the sense of, um, I don't make that, so to be honest, when I first wrote my book, my first book, it was wrote in the sense that I was worried and concerned I was going to be killed. And I want my story to have been told by me. I want my children to pick up that book and know why their dad did what he did. And that's when, when I wrote that, that's why I wrote it mainly. And I had that in my head. My children, I want them to understand and listen. And um, I didn't expect, and, and, that's a, and I'm being completely honest, to be 2018 sitting here talking. Because I've had six government warnings... Muslim, I went to a court case where Muslims were sentenced to 25 years. They were caught with guns, bombs, IEDs on the way to kill me. I've had multiple violent attacks. And um, so you're asking 10 years' time. I, I don't expect to be here in 10 years' time. I, I expect you to be here in 10 years' time. I hope I am. I, I want to see my children grow old. I want to see the success they make of their lives. I want to see all the same things every other parent wants to see. But the reality, the reality is if, if, if there's Muslim jihadis in this country, which there are, and they want to cause cause an uproar and they want to really then I'm the biggest target I've said things that in their mind are unforgivable about their prophet that they have to kill me so I don't look at things I look deeply at things and I don't I think there will be attempts made on my life um, and yeah where could it be in 10 years time 
who knows? I'm currently writing the next stage since my, my book, my first book, come out three years ago, and I'm I, I'm shocked that I could write another book and what's happened in the last three years. And I'm shocked that the narrative hasn't changed. The enemy, the state narrative, the fact the police want to target you. I thought that would all ease up and lessen up when I put it out there for everyone to understand, and, and it hasn't. And um, so, who knows? When I look what's happened in the last ten years. When I look at the people who are now contacting me and I'm sitting down with who would have run a mile for me nine years ago, who knows what's going to happen in the next ten years. But one thing's for sure, um, we'll continue fighting it with a smile on our face. And now for that last question. Yep. I said before we started, I'm interested in why defend Great Britain or why? What are you defending? What are you, Why is it worth defending? Why not just let... Islam take over or whatever. Like you've just even just where we are now. This country is the most beautiful country on earth, especially when it's sunny. You can't beat England when the sun's out. It's the one thing we lack. But what? Why are we fighting? I have three beautiful young children who. It's my duty. It's every father's duty to protect and preserve and hand to them a safe and prosperous Britain. If you look and you really re read and watch and look at what previous generations done, that's what that's what really gets you like fifteen year old boys pretending they were sixteen, forty children pretending they were men, so that they could run and fight and die and have a life expectancy of minutes on beaches in order to protect and preserve. They wanted to go fight. They weren't they weren't made to go fight, they wanted to go fight. They they were willing to sacrifice their lives like that. Because they knew they had a duty to uphold the history of this country and protect the future of it. Right now, people are scared to even talk. It's embarrassing what we've become. It's embarrassing the average man we've created. We've created a generation of cowards. And if you look at that, and it's like certain military mottos, it's better to die than be a coward. And, it, and I, I think it is. It is if you if you have any respect in being a man or being an Englishman. And when you look at what, what people have get before you to protect what you have the freedoms we enjoy now even sitting here enjoying it it's like when you talk about freedom of speech it's not free it wasn't free generations give their life so they fought and they died they left their children they kissed them goodbye and they give their life so that you enjoy that freedom and i and i think that we have a duty i have a duty not just as a father but as an englishman and I, and i've said that i try to try to explain that to my wife when she says all these things like, throughout the years or trying to say, stop, 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 stop. It's, what about the kids? What about the kids? I said, it's, it's not about my kids. It is about my kids, but it's not just about my kids. It's about a generation of kids. It's about their kids and their kids and their kids. And are we going to hand over to the darkest, the darkest thing on this, on this planet? The, the complete opposite of who we are, which is Islam. The beliefs, what they truth to them is, is wrong to us. Uh, it's the complete parallels. And um, yeah, we have a duty. And, uh, and that's what I'd say, I'm just fulfilling a duty as a, as a dad and as an Englishman. It's, it's your duty to protect, preserve and, and, and oppose evil. And even if you go through great people in history, whether it's Martin Luther King, if you see evil, you confront it. You oppose it. You certainly speak about it. And that's all we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. I want to say a personal thank you to you and to everyone. A personal thank you. Because, do you know what? And this is honest. Do you know the moment I had given up fighting, not given up fighting, but given up that you could resist what was happening? I've been through years of court cases and wrongdoings where things happened that shouldn't have happened. And the first time that, or the changing moment, was when you set up an online, an online donation thing. And I realised for the first time I've got the support of people. And then... And then I beat that court case. And I beat the court case after it. I beat the court case after it. Because now, and now I sit here comfortable knowing that if I walk down that street and they try to stitch me up or set something else, I know people are going to support me. And that was a moment that I, I didn't know until that moment. So, yeah, thank you to you and to everyone who supported me. You're welcome. Very welcome. I mean, that's, that's so cool. I mean, that guy is legit. And he's so true. He's, he's so right. He's like, dude, free speech wasn't free. You know, there's people that, that thought they lined up on a beach and had seconds to live and they knew it and they did it and they wanted to do it. And now these cowards won't even speak. They won't even say words. They won't even face minor social ridicule to keep what our ancestors have, have given us. 
And it's just pathetic. It really is. It, that got me angry. It's like, that's just so infuriating that that dude has to go through that by just being a normal guy from a normal generation. And now the generation is so fickle and weak that that um, that, that poor guy's in prison, you know? And he's facing his death, and he knows it. And it isn't because he wants to die. It isn't because he wants to be a martyr. It's because he's like, I feel the same way about stuff. Like, there's been times when Amy has talked to me about Issues like that. Like when I had someone run on stage the other night, I thought there's a chance I was being assassinated. And I'm not even close to a position that Tommy put himself in. And it's like, but if you if you cower, if you cower just for the momentary time you have with your kids at the expense of everyone else's, you don't deserve shit. And, and it'll all be taken from you. You know, that's power over truth. And I, someone said something... Um, Kyneton said something really cool in the chat. He said, I hope that this video never becomes relevant. And I I completely agree. You know, prayers for Tommy Robinson. And let's let's hope that that video doesn't become ominous. Or it doesn't become foreshadowing. Something horrifying. Because he does have the support. And I experienced a very similar thing that he did when he said, when people set up an online thing with him and, and he saw that he had the support of the people and it gave him more strength. It's so true. It's like, because you get so isolated. You get so exiled. You get so, um, just, you feel, you feel so alone when it first happens. When, when, when your friends first start not returning your calls and, uh, and, you know, like the things that you thought you knew, like P Jordan Peterson talks about the frame shift that happens where, you think you're in one place and then something happens and you realize you're someplace completely different. Like if you if you come home and your and your wife is in bed with another man or so like something just that just and 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 that's why it's important to pursue truth over power because people who pursue power over truth are incapable of dealing with sacrifice or momentary pain. They'll just go any direction that gives them less pain. And the more you do that, the more you become the donkey ears on on Pleasure Island. And the pursuit of truth, the sacrifice of it is sacrifice itself. There will be sacrifices and there will be times of pain. And it's pain that you could avoid in the moment. But you choose not to because long term you know that it will lead to uh, uh, something much more horrible. And so that's how truth is earned. It's by the ability to sacrifice and the ability to say, yeah, I may end up in jail, but that's the deal. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks to everyone for hanging out. Uh, the chat's been really cool lately. And, and there was, you know, 900 people, 1,000 people today. Right now we still have over 800. And it wasn't trolly today, which is awesome. So that's a good sign. And um, unbearablesapp.com, if you want to register, if you want to um, get verified. Well, you don't, you're not verified per se. But register your bare name and uh, chat with people. It, it rolls all day. It's pretty great. Hugepianist.com slash specials to get um, Reluctant Warlord. That'll be up tonight thanks to Artling, who is my new secret weapon. I mean, that dude. Now that I'm going to be living in the Northwest, he's also in the Northwest, we're going to make some serious shit. It's going to get serious. I want to. My goal is to be able to employ him full time. And... uh much love to Deleb out in Israel dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, flaming kites. I said kites, by the way, Deleb, not 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 the other word. Kites. And uh, hit the like button, share it, comment, comment on here. Let me know any funny lyrics you could think of for a song about Miss America, because I might do a. I might be writing a song about Miss America. So on, on this video, comment about any funny lyrics you could think of or any angles for a song about the Miss America no longer no longer valuing the beauty of a woman. <laughs> That's so hilarious. It's Danny Bear, not Baddish Bear. Your Facebook post about Portland video has way funny spelling errors. I use red lines to spell. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I can't spell. That's that's at this point that's pretty much uh a given. But um much love to Tommy Robinson. God bless Tommy Robinson. I'm going to be putting up the video of that song live. And uh, 
subscribe to this channel hit the uh, hit the notifications bell even though every day 11 Eastern time Eastern Standard Time Monday through Friday I try to get this done I didn't yesterday and I apologize for that but it was uh it was a crazy week and uh, be good to each other you know and I want to hear in the comments what you think about all this stuff like what you think about what Tommy's doing what you think about being a father and having to make some of those decisions and what you think about Miss America no longer caring about physical beauty and that opens up Amy Schumer to becoming Miss America and uh someone just said me Whitney Cummings was talking shit not talking shit about me but said some snide comment Bobby Lee fucking Whitney Cummings bitch is crazy by the way like like for real crazy all right, guys. Have a great day, and uh, just 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 go fuck yourselves. Like fuck off. Like f go fuck yourself.